Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. Today, we're going to build a scratch start TIG welder. Stick with me guys, should be fun. We'll see you at the other end. Okay, so this is going to be the basis of our scratch start TIG welder. It's a Sureweld SU-185 and it's uh, AC, DC, high, low. It's got an infinite adjustment. The on-off switch is not working. It flips back and forth, but it doesn't flip anything inside. So we're going to get this thing apart. And we're going to check out the switch, clean it up on the inside, see if we can get it running so we can turn it into a scratch start TIG welder. And it's that infinite adjustment. It's got high, low range, AC, DC. It's got everything we need. Okay, and it's got a really scary cord wired to it at the moment. Oh my goodness, can't even imagine. So, we are going to put a brand new plug on this thing. Checked out the cord. The length of it looks pretty good. We'll have to see what it looks like on the inside of the machine when we get it opened up. So we're not going to do a lot to it. I will blow it out. I will check and make sure that the circuits and uh, the wiring on the inside are connected and not corroded that kind of thing and fix the switch that's about it big dog uh, is really interested i think she's after lunch at the moment but uh we got work to do right now it's not lunch time yet and we're going to give it a little bit of a a paint job Nothing fancy, just a little rattle can for some contrast. We'll talk about that in a bit. All right. This thing is a beast on the inside. You know, big dog's back. Yeah, she wants some food. Let's eat some lunch, big dog. All right. She ate lunch, and she's doing the dishes. Awesome. I don't have to do them this time. Okay, back to this guy. So... It has a giant coil in the back with a giant rectifier sitting on it. Two giant coils in the front with a slide that goes between the coils to up and down the amperage. It is a beast. And this thing weighs, it's got to weigh over 200 pounds. So we're going to fix this switch up. It should be rocking back and forth on its own. Big dog. we got to work. So, <laughs> anyway, it looks like it's just gummed up dirt and, and crud over the years we'll get it out spray it out with some electrical cleaner get a little bit of lube in there and uh hope for the best so why a tig welder in the shop we have a mig welder and this thing will double as a tig and, a, and an arc um and honestly we've got a whole bunch of restoration work to do and i wanted a scratch start tig to uh, put some Damascus billets together with if you do not weld them together with a MIG welder you don't have to worry about the inclusion of the mild steel wire that kind of thing if you're not using any filler wire with the TIG so and you can quite often get away with that especially just to stick a uh, Damascus billet together with or pattern molded billet together with whatever you want to call it all right so cleaning off the front of this so we can read a little bit better that kind of thing um, the connections on the inside, wiring looks really good. Haven't been any mics in there chewing on anything. Nothing corroded up. It's a little dusty. And uh, the switch seems to be working, so we'll get it put back together. And honestly, this is going to open up a couple of doors for us to do a couple of other things around the shops that we've been needing to do and wanting to do. And we're going to incorporate a few more restoration projects into the videos that we're putting out here uh, a little bit of maker stuff and this will help out in that capacity we've got some machinery that needs some work um, i've got my colchester student lathe that needs some work done on it and different things like that around the shop that you guys will be seeing some uh, videos on and uh, so yeah you're going to get a little bit of maker stuff out of big dog forge not necessarily changing any formats just uh a lot of stuff to do and take you guys along for the ride. Might as well, right? Let you know what I'm doing and see what's going on behind the scenes as well. 
All right, we're going to give this thing a little bit of a, this will be a flat black paint job. And it's, uh, believe me, I knocked the dust off the outside of this thing and that's about it. So really it's just uh, to clean up the, the scuzz that's on the outside. I saw Jimmy DeRest to do this on his tractor. This is how I maintain my tractor, he says, and he grabs a rattle can and starts spraying over the, 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 the oil leaks. There you go. I think he was doing it to irritate people, I don't know, but you know what? It works. And really, like I said, what it's for is some contrast. And you'll see why here in just about a second or two. All right, get that thing dried up. And, uh, well, Big Dog is just so interested in this, it's amazing. All right. So, as I'm putting this back together, I uh, went online, Amazon, and did some shopping. It stuff's pretty inexpensive. It's wide range of things, but after watching a few videos, um, I ordered up a bunch of stuff for a scratch start TIG welder to hook to this thing. And... Um, We'll be pulling that stuff out of the box here in a minute. But, some of you guys have seen a little bit of this before, but I had a little bit of a problem with some folks. Uh, you might say they were borrowing my footage from my YouTube channel uh, without asking. So I've decided to make this little stencil here, and we're going to start putting it on things in the shop. So you see it in the background, and uh, it'll kind of help watermark the videos a little bit. So that's why we did this thing in black and we're going to use a little bit of white paint and it'll stand out a little bit better and we'll put it on the side and then we just kind of ran around the shop and put it on just about everything that we could find to put it on and uh, yeah, so you'll be seeing that around a little bit more and a little Hobart welder on top needs it on the side as well, we'll get to that in a minute. It doesn't need to say Hobart. Alright, get this thing back underneath, and then we'll pull out the goodies that came from Amazon. Uh, we got ourselves a little tank, and what we're going to do is cut a hole in this deck and stick it down through, but the tank is too short to reach the bottom, so we're going to build a little platform for it, and eventually I'll get a bigger tank, and it'll sit all the way down and stick out the top there. Alright, this is a gas flow regulator meter thing that's used for scratch start TIG awesomeness and we have straight argon in that bottle and it's a little adapter and I had to buy a hose um, from a local welding outfit I think I bought it from Praxair or something like that it was the only one I could get a hold of quick and uh, it didn't have any adapters on the end of it that actually matched that regulator. So we're going to cut one into the hose off, put it on a little barbed fitting, and make sure we get our Teflon tape on there. We don't want to be leaking out argon. Stuff's getting more expensive all the time. All right. Pick it in and cut it off. Okay, a little hose clamp. So we've got our argon bottle. we got our flow regulator which is really cool you get a little ball in there you got to turn those things on slow otherwise the little ball hits the top of the glass and it's kind of scary all right this is our power lug and there's a bolt that goes through this thing and a washer on there and what we're going to do is we've got a couple of leads for this arc welder we got our little uh mild steel damascus knife we made uh, we just strip that a little bit more. It's not long enough. There we go. Zip. Okay, and we're going to wrap this around that under the washer, back over on itself. We'll tighten this down. That'll give us a really nice connection. So this is actually going to be the... What is this? This is the negative lead because this is a negative electrode or an en i guess you would call it when it comes to the scratch start stuff and your positive side goes to your ground connector on this so uh 
going to wrap it up with a little electrical tape because if I don't, I'll end up shocking myself. And what I'm going to do is this is just sort of a temporary measure to get this thing running. And a little later, I will go ahead and wrap this in a piece of leather so that there's no chance of me, uh, you know, killing myself. Because, you know, if somebody's going to do that, it's going to be me. All right. <laughs> Okie doke. I've got to clean up this little lug end that goes into that machine. These things are in actually pretty good shape. A little corroded on the ends, but uh, there's no bare wires along the, the leads or any of that. And the lugs fit real nice and tight. So we're going to go ahead and go with those. All right, our gas hose goes in this end to supply argon up to the torch. And all this stuff was bought on Amazon, and that power lug right there was like six bucks. It's super cheap stuff. And I think I went for the uh, high dollar cable here. It had a sleeve on it to protect it. And uh, this torch and hose and connector and all that stuff, I think, ran about $45. So this stuff is, you know, for what it is, it's, it's pretty cheap. Big dog. I'm checking out the torch. All right, so we're going to put our little collet in there. Actually, the collet goes on the other end. There we go. That was the outer collet piece. And then we got this 16th inch rod that came with this thing. And uh, we got a 16th inch collet. We're going to have to get something that's a little bit bigger than this. Probably some 3 seconds or 1 8 something. I'm not sure. But we're going to fire it up with this today just to uh, play with it. So there's our flow regulator, our hose, our tank. We've got our leather around our lug. We're plugged into the negative DC and we're at about 90 amps DC. There's our leather wrap. Try not to electrocute ourselves. And we gotta turn the flow meter on. Okie doke. Let's get some practice in with this thing and see what happens. So if you are a professional or a uh, amateur or someone who thinks they know what they're doing here just look away this is appalling anyway um <laughs> just trying not to electrocute myself here and imitate what i've seen others do so scratch start is a little bit different but it ain't come out too bad but uh it'll get better over time all right let's make something artsy fartsy with this thing so it's, I think it's a maker blood kind of thing. You just, you know, it's in your blood. You, you want to do something. You don't know anything about it. So you just go out and buy it and you play with it until you figure it out. And then you, you know, start using it to make stuff with. And, you know, I think there's a lot of folks in the world like that. It's all about, you know, the fun of exploration and figuring it out. And that's really what this is all about for me. And you're going to see more of this kind of stuff coming out of Big Dog Forge as well as forging videos so there you go i hope you enjoyed this one guys hope you got something out of it <laughs> all right i'll get back in the office and end this thing all right guys there you go so a scratch start tick welder awesome it um seems to work really well and as soon as i learn how to use it it'll work even better so anyway, thanks for uh, checking out the video, guys. Thanks for sticking with me through this. And uh, if you haven't thought about it, why don't you like, share, and subscribe? Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time right here at Big Dog Forge. Bye-bye now. Take care and be safe.